Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and today we're back with another build guide video. We're going to bring you through Luca, who is the new character as of version 1.2. I think the biggest confusion about this character is people keep thinking he's a DOT only character. Maybe it's because he's released together with like Sampo in the Limited Banner and Kafka as well. Uh, that's why a lot of people have misconceptions on him. If we take a look at his overall skill kit, I can just show you that the only thing that actually procs DOT, other than of course the physical weakness break, is his skill ability. So his whole kit, only the skill actually procs bleeding on the enemy target. As you can see here, it skills off with a certain percentage of his attack and the enemy's max HP as well. So those are like two restrictions. I can just show you real quick, press E and I'm going to just hit this unit here. And as you can see, he has this bleeding status on this enemy, uh, lasts for three turns. Uh, for Luca as well. So I think that is like the first biggest misconception that people have about his kit. They keep thinking he's like he's only DOT related, but in actual fact, if you look at his overall kit here, uh, which is his basic attack also has an enhanced mode and his ultimate ability deals quite a bit of uh, large amounts of percentage multipliers too, which means that he actually skills very nicely with crit rate and crit damage since uh, the instances can crit and that is I think something that's also very important to know. Of course the multipliers here I only have it at like level 4, level 4 and level 3 so don't read too much about the absolute multipliers uh, when it hits level 10 and so on and so forth it's going to be actually a lot more. So let's talk about the second part of our, his kit let me just fast forward real quick we're using Natasha to hit randomly. So if you notice here these 4 gauges this is like his fighting spirit he gains this when he auto attacks or he uses a skill, he gains one stack of this. When he has at least two stacks, his basic attack will transform into this like enhanced basic attack mode. Um, when he's in, in this like enhanced basic attack mode, you consume the stacks, two stacks to do like a, a more damage in the skill. So I can show you real quick. Um, normally it's like 70% at level 3, but here you do like 3 hits of 14% and you do a final one of 56%. When you use Enhance, you also get this additional bonus here of uh, dealing damage if the enemy target is bleeding. At a point of time, they will trigger the bleed instantly as well to do 71% of the original damage at level 3. So since this guy was already bleeding, let's go ahead and smack this guy and I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, uh, the instance of course was blocked by the damage, but he's, uh, after that when the uppercut hit, of course the bleed was immediately triggered to see that like 1380 uh, as well. That's something useful to know. And of course his number of stacks has decreased to zero. So let me just show you real quick his no uh, normal attack and he will gain one stack over here. And now we will, I'll show you his ultimate ability. His ultimate ability, how it works is uh, you gain two stacks of fighting will. So it's very good if you want to like quickly get your enhanced basic attack very quickly. And it does quite a, a significant amount of damage on the enemy target as well. So for example, if I'm going to punch this guy who has no physical weakness. So damage is of course not representative. It's not like fully well built and stuff like that. I'll do like more comparison videos in subsequently. If you're interested to find like how does he fare up against Su Sang and other physical DPSs, check back on the channel as well. I'll have that ready for you in a little bit. But this is going to be like a super beginner's guide as well. So the other benefit about his ultimate ability is also if you saw that there's like this vulnerability mode, it basically allows the enemy to have increased damage taken. So you see this part here, increase a single uh, damage take received by 14.4% for 3 turns. If we look at the target here, you can see this vulnerability. So it's something like a nihility class of like increasing damage the enemy takes. Although it's only single target, I think it's a pretty nice uh, useful tool, especially from a sec secondary like DPS role to help buff up your, like, your main damage dealer. So we kind of like talk about most of it, his technique is more or less simple. When you enter the battle, you deal damage across the board, a base chance to inflict his skill bleed on the target as well. But this is not 100% always reliable in the memory of chaos since you only get techniques in the first part, didn't talk too much about that. But that in essence is his overall kit. Let me just back off real quick and talk real quick like his tracers and how that also changes his playstyle. So as you can see here, the major tracers that really matters the most, I think, is Kinetic Overload. This one turns him into like a, something like a Pella. When you use the skill, not only do you do damage, but you also dispel buffs on them. You also put them with bleed. This is very nice uh, addition to have. Makes him a little bit more versatile, especially as we can see now in the Memory of Chaos, a lot of the Sento Luofu monsters do require a bit of dispelling buffs from them as well to remove like the healing effect, revive effect, etc, etc. Now uh, this one, Cycle Breaking, whenever he gains like Fighting Will, you gain an additional 3 energy. So when he basic attacks, he scales, or he uses his ultimate, you get back a little bit of refund. Nice to have. Um, as we can see, his ultimate ability cost costs like 130, which is generally quite high. To put it into perspective comparison, Natasha here, 
uh, which a lot of us might use, only has an energy cost of 90, so we can put that like into perspective a little bit. Other than that, his last major trace here, when he uses a uh, enhanced basic attack, the one that has, requires two uh, charges or fighting spirit in order to use, uh, he has a 50% chance of dealing one additional hit, just increasing a little bit of his damage, which is pretty nice. Um, his traces here is very simple. He has a lot of attack percentage, which he does skill off with, since his skill ability over here is capped off like based on his attack, as well as the enemy's max HP as the uh, DOT from this bleed. So a lot of uh, attack percentage. Effect hit rate also is really nice. He has quite a bit of effect hit rate. And the last thing that he has, of course, is a little bit of defense to make him a bit more survivable, a bit more chunky, which is nice, especially if you're running a triple nihility uh, cast or only have like one sustained character. You want your characters to be a little bit more chunkier in general. So that is for like uh, tracers, uh, characters, how he works. I think that uh, cycles really nicely into his build. Now that we have talked about how he works and we mentioned that he can be played both in like a DOT team as well as a crit team as well. Uh, this affects a lot of the builds here, which means that there are two main ways that you people would want to build him. You can either build him like purely break effect DOT style, just using his skill, very, very costly on skill points for the team. On the second way is of course going the traditional crit similar to a Su Sang build, a DPS Su Sang build. Um, they, they really are quite similar, Su Sang and, and him, uh, just fitting maybe into a little bit slightly different teams as well. Both have decent amounts of single target damage. So with that disclaimer aside, let's jump on to like optimal relics uh, and talking about the really the choices that you have in case you don't want to like spend your whole entire day farming him. Out of all of them, I think 4P's Champion of Streetwise Boxing is going to be pretty much the generalistic uh, starting point. Of course, there's a lot of caveats which we will go into a little bit. This one is nice, it gives him physical damage which benefits both the DOT aspect and his crit uh, aspect instances. So physical damage is always like very very high in priority. When his attack or his hit, attack increases by 5% for the rest of the battle, which means there's no turn cooldowns. Uh, he can easily get this and he does skill off attack very well, which is why he does want to have, um, uh, this set actually works pretty well for him for a traditional um, build for him as well. The second option, of course, is to run a break effect kind of Luca, who is really focusing on like bleeding the enemy out when he's breaking them. This is better if maybe you're just uh, going on a low investment Luca, maybe your, your crit gear is used by other DPSs, like maybe Su Sang, you have like, for example, Clara is using this set, etc. Um, this is going to be pretty nice also. Good amounts of break effect. When you break enemies, you get uh, additional energy back. Uh, it helps a lot with his refund. So I think this is, will be like the very close second in terms of choice, depending on what you're going with. The other option I think that is pretty useful is going to be Messenger uh, Traversing Hackerspace, the two-piece. You could run a two-piece here with a combo of Thief of Shooting Meteor and Champions of Streetwise Boxing. I think these three uh, pretty much work well. The others, I don't see like a huge reason to play them. Maybe God of Woodering Snow, again, uh, mini heality characters with generally a bit of chunkiness could use a bit of damage reduction in your kit, some sustain energy, uh, especially if you're maybe not only running with like one sustain character. I could see value in God of Woodering Snow for such teams. But yeah, those are my thoughts. I don't really think Masked or Wild Weed because this 12% is easily um, dominated by this amount here. This is like 25%, which is more than double that. Um, other than that, the basic attack damage is nice, speed is nice, but I think this physical damage bonus is way, way better um, for apple to apple comparison as well. That is for the main four cavern relics. The other thing I want to talk about really is the main sets for planner ornaments. The, similarly, the two main ways you can play him, you could of course go with Inert Sao Soto to make use of the crit rate here and ultimate ability, which uh, he deals a lot of damage from his ultimate ability. Follow up attack he doesn't have, so you don't really use this second portion, which means uh, Rutilan Arena is actually going to be pretty useful uh, since you get more value from both the basic attack and skill. And he does want to build the crit rate, which means this 70% crit rate is actually kind of achievable, uh, especially with a good investment for him. So I think these two probably about the same. Uh, if you have a lot of this, um, probably this one is also not too bad, but I think overall this one is the best if you can get the 70% since he can use all stats as well. Um, the other option I think is Broken Kill and Celestial Differentiator. The argument for Celestial Differentiator is if you just care specifically on like this crit damage 16%, which is uh, if it's more selfish in a way, but Broken Kill allows you to give crit damage to your entire party and 30% effect resistance, although you can only get it from substats, you only need like 20% more and a bit more effect resistance uh, does add a bit more uh, 
uh, uh, or consistency to your runs, especially if the enemies have a lot of crowd control. I don't think it's always a bad thing, especially if your units, uh, for example, you are entering like harder content, which enemies have a lot of higher effect hit rate and stuff like that. So my choice, I, I think I would choose Broken Kill over Celestial Differentiator, just for the fact you can give everyone this 10%. Um, the other options that you have, if you're running more of a uh, uh, attack percentage or DOT kind of um, Luca, likely he was going to be a support, which means Fleet of Ageless is going to be a lot better. You give him a bit more HP, you buff your whole team with attack by this 8% amount here. Uh, if you don't care about team buffing for some reason, maybe it's a small selfish playstyle, you could consider Space Ceiling Station here. Gives him a lot more attack, which he does require, since he scales off attack very nicely. This is, of course, if you are focusing mainly on his bleed ability from his skill to do a lot of damage on uh, chunkier enemies uh, to hit that 24% cap of the enemy's max HP. That is one way to consider. Pan Galactic Commercial Enterprise, I think is okay. He doesn't have too much uh, debuffs on the enemy other for them from his ultimate and some bleed. So I don't think this is like super, super critical, but definitely having 25% additional attack that is synergetic with his effect hit rate, I could see value in that. So it depends on the playstyle that you're looking for. But generally, I think for a support, uh, for a support looker, I would like Fleet of Ageless or Broken Kill a little bit more. If you're running DPS, likely Rutland Arena. And that's a quick summary. The last one, of course, Kingdom Banditry, if you're running him, break effect. Now that's for like the main stats. What am I running him and exactly uh, what stats do you want to look out for? Let's talk about that right now. For me, I'm running a two-piece broken kill since he scales off with crit. I'm, I want to run him into more crit teams as well. Uh, if, uh, for example, I don't have Su Sung in my team, um, then I would definitely don't mind like, for example, having him as a more of like a Su Sung role filler uh, in the team. That's why I chose broken kill. Uh, Messenger, Hackerspace, 6% uh, here, Champions of Streetwise Boxing for the increased physical damage. I would want to switch this ideally into a 4-piece uh, Champion of Streetwise Boxing for him since he does scale off very nicely with the attack as mentioned, but for now this is the best gear that I can scrap up uh, for uh, in 1.2, but we will likely change that in future as well. So what are the stats I'm looking for? I'm not going to talk about the, the mainly the two fixed main stats. I'll talk about sub stats in a little bit, but I'm looking for crit rate main stat for the body. You could run crit damage as well, depending on how your ratios are uh, for your characters. Um, speed, I think is, is probably going to be one of the better ones, especially if you're not running him with a turn buffer. For example, like Bronya in the same team, uh, speed definitely is going to help him get more turns, get more energy, get more fighting spirit so he can do more damage as well. Uh, keep up his uptime on his uh, damage amplification. I think it's also not too bad. Uh, other than that, if you're running, uh, the other option probably will be like attack percentage for here, but he will uh, move quite slow. He doesn't really have a lot of like speed up in his overall kit as we've seen uh, previously too. Uh, other options here, uh, you can run a uh, physical damage bonus is probably the best. Attack percentage is kind of like copium, uh, but I guess some people could do that if you wanted to. Overall, I think I prefer physical damage bonus for the planet sphere. We talked about... Uh, um, how DOT is affected by attack percentage and elemental damage bonus in our DOT guide video on the channel. Just go ahead and click on our profile. You can even see it on, like, on the main screen. I put it on one of the highlights that is very useful for people to see as well. Um, before we go into the link road, let's talk about the this I forgot to mention for the DOT builds. If you are looking for the body for DOT builds, I think crit rate is not going to be as useful if you are just specifically wanting to maximize that bleed. In that case, you want to go for attack percentage for the body if you just want to maximize the bleed damage from his skill. Otherwise, I think effect hit rate is the alternative that you can go for. But then again, uh, he has a lot of crit that he can focus on in his overall kit as well, since a lot of his instants can crit. That's why I think crit rate likely will outperform uh, for the most part. Uh, that is just my thoughts. And Link Rope, last but not least, I think Attack Percentage, uh, Energy Restoration Rate or Break Effect will be a very nice choice for him. Break Effect is more of if you are just running him purely on a DOT Break Effect kind of build, similar to a Break Effect Susung kind of playstyle. Attack Percentage is more generalistic, you can play into both, uh, but a lot of people will be competing for, of course, Attack Percentage Link Ropes together with like Crit Rate, Crit Damage lines. So that is one um, downside about running a standardized build. Other than that, energy restoration rate, I think is also a very, very versatile one. You can play both into a crit. You can be played also into a DOT because you get more uptime on his ultimate, which is quite useful because of the damage amplification, the amount of fighting spirit stacks that he gets as well. So that is uh, my recommendation for the main stats. For sub stats, crit build, similarly, you look for crit rate, crit damage, speed, attack percentage. Those four are probably my most important. If you're not going for a crit rate, maybe you're going for a DOT route, uh, you want to look for something, uh, for example, like maybe a bit more speed. You want to look for a bit more attack percentage, break effect. Uh, effect hit rate is probably like the lower priority out of the higher priority stuff. And that is my honest thoughts 
Now let's go on with the light cones. What am I using on him? And uh, here for the demo, I'm just using Fermata. But let's talk first. Let's go to the data bank. I think that's way better when we can see everything all at once. And if you guys are finding value in this video so far, do give me a like, comment, and subscribe for more of such future content. We do this for every single new character that's out. So we try to go in depth for all of you guys to make it easier for you to understand. I don't think it's everything. I think some of you know a lot more than me, but that's a starting point, I think, for a lot of you to start building your knowledge as well. Uh, that's why I share these kind of videos. So first things first, I want to talk about resolution shines as pulse of sweat as his light cone. In my opinion, I think this is probably going to be his one of his better ones. Uh, it reduces the defense of the enemy target, which indirectly like increases his own damage. Uh, if you have it at higher um, uh, super in, in positions, it does defense break quite significantly as well. Uh, of course, it, he only hits in a single target, so you do miss the chance to like AOE and debuff the enemies with an AOE uh, character that can use this. So that's one of the key downsides. Um, other than that, I think Good Night Sleep Well is also pretty strong if you are building him mainly for a DPS. He doesn't have too many debuffs in his kit. Like at most, you have the skill bleed, you have the ultimate uh, damage amplification, so you get two stacks. You still likely will need one more. Maybe if you uh, the enemy is weakness broken for physical or something like that. That's like the only uh, other uh, option that you have to get the full stacks. Otherwise, I think this is probably going to be the best four star for DPS if you're talking about just maximizing his own crit uh, DPS potential. If you are building him more for like DOT, uh, let's just take a look real quick. I think this one is like so-so, not very useful as mentioned. He doesn't care too as much about effect hit rate as other characters who are very reliant on the debuff they place. He only has one or two debuffs that he places, not super, super vital uh, in my opinion. DOT here for the 8%, I would much rather a more generalistic one like a good night sleep well, which really gives a DOT as well as his regular damage buff as well. So that is one... Uh, Eyes of Prey, I don't think it's very, very nice. Fermata here, uh, good amounts of break effect here. Uh, this requires you to, of course, run with Shock or Wind Shear uh, uh, allies. Of course, he does bleed, which doesn't really benefit from this section here. Um, so I think Fermata is like so so, not really like super free to play friendly if, if that's the case. Um, here, again, effect hit rate not super important. He doesn't have defense and reduction in his kit, which means this event like code is not very, very useful for him also. Um, we Will Meet again probably is the only 4 star that is the left that is probably decent. Of course, it's a paid uh, from the Battle Pass uh, Nameless Glory as well. When he uses basic attack or skill, does more damage based on his attack, which he skills off with. So I think this overall is quite strong for him if you just wanted to squeeze out a little bit of damage because he does basically use like basic attack and skills uh, predominantly in his combos. So that is for We Will Meet again and the other four. I'm not going to talk about really about the 3-star because he's a DPS in nature. So he really wants the stats of like a 4-star, light cone and higher. As you can see, he doesn't have slow. He doesn't care about the void either. Hidden Shadow also is like not super, super good because of a very low scaling of, of uh, the 3-star stats here. You can see like 317. Whereas if you, for example, just go to Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat, you can see it's like uh, close to 50%. I don't know, 50% weaker. And that's how it is. Um, let's talk about Welts Light Cone here. You increase damage to debuff targets. This is very strong. It increases the amount of damage it does. Attack percentage is very nice. Effect hit rate is also very solid. I think uh, in the name of the world is very solid for Luca. It gives him the stats that he requires at level 80. is like 582 since he's more of like a DPS nihility character as well. So he will like uh, this one quite well. He deb debuffs the enemy with his ultimate ability to increase the damage they take. So that compounds on the fact. I think it's super, super strong in the name of the world. Uh, let's talk about the other two light cones, limited ones, real quick, because not everyone has limited light cones. You probably put them on other characters. Uh, increased damage dealt by Wero is definitely useful. Speed is also very useful for him. And having the option to, of course, inflict some lightning DOT based on his attack percentage uh, is very, very solid. Patience is all you need. Very good. In, in my opinion, it's like better than in the name of the world based on theorizing uh, between the two of them for Luca at this point of time. Incessant Rain is also pretty strong. The effect hit rate, as mentioned, okay, it's nice to have, but not super vital. Uh, but the crit rate is the one that is really good, plus the Aether Code, which increases a damage a single target will take. He's something like a mini miniature Silver Wolf at this point, because he with so much Aether Code and like the his ultimate debuffs also, you really uh, start to amp damage on a single target quite well. So for those of you who don't have Silver Wolf, but have the Light Code for some reason, I guess you can play it in that way. So a lot we have covered so far. Let's talk about uh, Eidolon's next, which of course is going to be a bit more longer shelf life. That's why I left it slightly later in, in this video, since not everyone will pull maybe a E6 Luca right on when he's first released. When Luca takes action, if the target is bleeding, you increase damage by 15%. This is pretty nice. Means that you can also fit into bleeding teams to increase Luca's damage also. 
And next up, E2. The enemy is weak and I am strong. If the skill hits an enemy target with physical weakness, you gain one more stack of fighting will. This makes the skill basically the same like your ultimate ability in terms of giving you the amount of charges, giving you a lot more value from using the skill points as well for Luca and might make him a little bit more skill point hungry in my opinion because he starts wanting to use skill more often and not just to get the, the fighting will up. So that's one thing to consider. For never turning back, for every stack of fighting will obtained, increase attack by 5%, stacking up to 4 times. So as you can see, like you might not get the full 4 stacks, but at least 2 stacks, that's like a 10% attack percentage as well. Uh, if you want to go for the final 4, you probably have to basic attack once, get the 2 stacks, and then use your skill to push it all the way to 4. Uh, to get that full 20% to use like, your ultimate and whatnot, uh, and etc. as well. That is how it works. And last but not least, E6, Champion's Applause. Uh, when your enhanced basic attack hits a bleeding target, the bleed status will immediately deal damage one time equal to 8% of the original damage from every hit. Uh, this is just like a massive amount of damage increase when you're doing an enhanced basic attack on a bleeding target. So all of his Eidolons, as we can see here, all just increase his damage. Doesn't change his playstyle too much, in a sense. The only one that probably changes it a little bit more is this one. Uh, might make him a bit more skill point hungry or less, depending on the teams that you're in as well, or whether you are relying on him a lot for DPS. So other than that, I don't think his E6 uh, here is like a game changer, a game breaker for him. Works pretty decent at E0 if that's the case, not really limited behind his uh, Eidolons, making him more free to play friendly than some other characters like maybe Ting Xue uh, and stuff like that. So that is for his Eidolons. Let's go ahead and talk real quick about his team comms lastly. Um, first things first, uh, probably pure physical teams that a lot of people want to run. He really fills a role that is very similar to Su Sang here, very single target in nature. Of course, he has uh, access to Nihility Light Cones, which has a lot of like defense uh, reduction in the kit, damage amplification from some of the limited Light Cones as well. Uh, I think that he would likely compete with Shu Sang in a similar role, especially if you have a main DPS for a physical team. But of course, um, if you are not putting them against each other, you can probably run a team like this. Might work as well for a triple uh, uh, physical and one maybe... Uh, for example, Silver Wolf to implant the physical weakness. You could swap her out, put in Clara, works pretty nicely as well for like a pure physical mono team. Of course, you can fit her into a uh, fit him into a, like a DOT team with, for example, Kafka as well as Sampo, which I think a lot of people will be starting off with uh, for a start as well, like a combo of these three when they just put Kafka. So that's another aspect you can think about. But I just give you two simple ones that I think people generally people will find useful as well to start looking towards. If you want a more in-depth guide on Luca's team composition, I have a video here that we go in-depth into like a lot of combinations of this character. And if you want to also know more about maybe other banner characters like Sampo, Kafka, we have built guides on these characters also on the channel. So uh, take a look. I'll just leave one here in the end screen. And thank you so much for watching. We do this every single patch and we're doing some comparison videos in a bit as well. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.